Hello, this is Reza Rat from Redacad. In this video, I want to talk about one of the tips in DAX and Power BI, which would help your calculations to be more dynamic. There is a type of parameter in Power BI you can add, uh, which is called what if parameter. What if parameter is quite different than Power Query parameters, and they help in making your DAX calculations dynamic. I'm going to show you in a real world example of how we can change the sales of last month to be sales of two months ago, three months ago, five months ago, using that parameter, giving the user the ability to change it rather than us going every time and changing that period. Let's go and check it out. Uh, so uh, there are two types of parameters in Power BI when you want to make things parametric. One of them is Power Query parameter, which I have created a separate video about it. I explained what is Power Query parameter. Usually the situation to use that is when you have a data source that you want to change that data source detail dynamically. Like for example, if it is a um, SQL server in the URL to that server, the user and password, those kind of things, like anything you want to make it uh, dynamic. It may not be necessarily the user and password. It might be the database table. It might be a lot of things. You want to make it parametric through your ETL process, through your data transformation process. That is Power Query parameter, which is not subject of this video. Uh, there is another type of parameter, which we call it what if parameter. What if parameter uh, is a type of parameter you added inside Power BI. These parameters are for user interaction. Power Query parameters are not necessarily for user interaction. They are for uh, making your Power Query code maintainable, more easier to maintain, that you can go and change it more like a developer parameter and then refresh the data. Whereas here, the Power uh, BI what if parameters they are um, usually added in the report as a slider or something user can go and select it and your DAX calculation changes based on that so I'm going to show you this let's switch into my uh, screen which I will go and show you very quickly how does this work so let's go to the screen um, this is a, a sample Power BI uh, report that I have. Uh, I'm not starting from scratch. I am using an existing file. This is based on AdventureWorks data source. Uh, I have two tables in here. I have a sales table that has all the sales data uh, and a date table that would filter this. Uh, I have a visualization in here that shows uh, for each of the period, like each month, July 2005, this is sales, August 2005, this is the sales. And then I have a DAX calculation here, which gives me the sales of last month. What we'll use for that is parallel period. There are different types of calculations you can use for this. Uh, there are different types of functions you can use for this time intelligence. And I have separate videos about it, like difference between parallel period, date add, um, dates between. There are lots of different functions you can use. In this example, I'm using date uh, parallel period. Uh, and this is not a video to talk about the specific uh, details of that. I have a separate video, so go and check it out. This video necessarily is talking about how to make things parametric. So in this calculation, you see that I'm saying that give me the sales for parallel period. This is my date field of one month ago. That minus one month basically means one month ago. Now we might want to change that, like because if I build this report and I share it with my users, they might say, well, this is good, but I want to compare the sales of this month with two months ago, with three months ago, sometimes with six months ago. Um, they want to have this ability, how they can do this change without us going and every time creating a new measure or creating like 10 different measures for each of these period. Um, we can actually make this parametric, this um, one or whatever number you have parametric. And the way we do it is we'll go and create a what if parameter. So I'll go and um, create that. So I'll go to the modeling tab. This is the place that we do calculations, but there is also a place to add a parameter. Uh, which we call it what if parameter. What if parameters comes in two different types. This video is about the numeric range. There is also a field parameter that is also quite helpful. Uh, so I'm adding a numeric range parameter. For a numeric range parameter, the parameter that you add would be a number data type. Uh, you just set a um, name for it. So let's call it, for example, um, month period. I just call it like that. Um, the data type is number, the minimum, let's say, is 1, maximum is 12. So I'm basically giving my user the ability to go one month back or all the way to 12 months back. 
increment one at a time and the default is one, right? So these are basically all the specification that you set up, the data type, the name, and the minimum, maximum increment and the default and making sure that this is also checked because this would then add that parameter as a slicer inside your, um, your page. So when I say create, what happens is that first the slicer would be added to the page. You see here is the slicer. I'll just bring it on this side. Uh, and this is giving me that ability to change from one to 12, exactly that range that I specified and it increment one at a time. As you can see, the default is always one. Not only that, um, but also in addition to that, there is a new table added in my model, exactly with the name of that parameter. If I go to the table view, you can see what this table looks like. Um, so this is that new table created. This is a calculated table. Uh, this table uses a specific DAX expression using generate series. Generate series, which I have a separate video about, again about this too as well, uh, is giving you a list of uh, numbers from one to whatever. Generate series can be also used for dates as well. Uh, in this case, this is saying that generate from one to 12, increment one at a time, and this is the output of that. So even that UI for what if parameter, even if we didn't had that, like four years ago, five years ago, when Power BI didn't have that functionality, Power BI desktop, you could still create this structure yourself by creating a calculated table, a list of values in it, using a generate series or any other function that gives you that list, and then go and use it in a report in a visualization. Not only this comes as part of that what if parameter creation, there is also another thing added in here as well. Uh, so one is the column, which we have these values in it. There is a measure also, which is that month period value. This measure is using a selected value function, selected value, when you have this um, column in a slicer or something like that, would tell you what value is selected in that slicer. And a selected value comes with a second parameter. Second parameter is saying that what, what if nothing is selected? So if nothing is selected, it's one, or you can change it. This is what we saw when we set that default parameter uh, value in that UI. So that is where that is coming from. So basically I need all, of, uh, I have everything I need in here. I can go to the report just to show you what it looks like for this measure value. I'll put that in a card visual so that you can see what it looks like. So this is a card visual coming over here and I just put this value here. You see month period value at the moment is one. If I go and change it, it changes like that. So basically I have a way that captures this value and that is using that selected value function. Now, all I need to do is to use this measure in my calculation for sales last month. So instead of calling it sales last month, I'm going to call it sales X month ago or whatever. Uh, then the only part that needs to be changed is here. Uh, now, because those values are positive, this value is negative. So I'll keep the minus, but instead of one, I change it to that, whatever it is, month period value. So this is saying that whatever is selected there, just show me the value of that. And as soon as I press uh, enter or validate it, you see that this changes. So this is at the moment, five months ago, three months ago, two months ago. So for example, if we look at one of these records for December 2005, uh, this December sales is this much, 755,000, whatever. Uh, and then two months before that, which would be October, is this much. So then if you have like month over month comparison, all of those would be based on that, like this minus that divided by this. And if you want this to be like, for example, eight months before that, then because for December 2005, we didn't had sales eight months before that, like let's look at December 2006, this value should be for, well, eight months before that, what that would be April. So April 2006. And anywhere in your calculation can change based on that. Now you still see that um, title of the column is sales X month ago. Some visuals give you ability to modify some of the titles based on ex expression. In table visual, we don't have that ability in the column itself, but we have it in the table. So what I can do is I can put a title for the table to be dynamically based on an expression. What I'll do is I'll go and create a new measure. I'm going to call this, um, title for X month ago or whatever. Uh, and basically this title is going to be, for example, 
uh, sales x month ago, right? Uh, now, instead of that x value, I want this value to come from that mm, measure. So I just uh, put these concatenation characters. So this is like one string. The other part is another string. And then concatenate them with that value in between, which is month period value. Right? So just as simple as that. This would give me the text that I will then go into this table visual, into the format of the visual, under the title, I enable that, and I would click on FX. That is how you would make uh, conditional formatting. So FX here, and there are uh, conditional formatting in many different places. I'll leave it as field value. I'll go and choose that title measure that I've created. And this should come over here. I'll make it slightly bigger so that it looks like a title as well. Uh, and here it is. Right, I can even make the background black, text color white, so that it makes a little bit difference. So here you go. I have a calculation that dynamically changes without me as a developer every time going and changing that. And you can use this practice uh, in a lot of places. This is not a practice that you just use in this uh, particular situation. There are a lot of situations that you can use this practice um, anywhere that you want to do, for example, conditional formatting based on a specific number, a specific pres percentage as a threshold, then that percentage, you can make that dynamic by having a what if parameter and things like that. Uh, what if parameter also comes as a field parameter as well, which has its own benefit. Uh, I'll make sure that I'll have a separate video about that. I already have a blog about uh, what if field parameter, but uh, not a video. I'll do a video about that as well. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned some um, new best practices to use Power BI and DAX. Um, until the next video, bye.